Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> well, good evening. Good evening. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad to be in the service. Someone did not wake up this morning. But if you see someone next to you, you ought to clap because that means they did. Did you all pray for me as I was gone and on the road? I don't believe I would have been able to succeed without prayer. I don't care how anointed you are. You need someone praying for you on a regular basis. Don't care, don't care how long you've been doing it, what title, what office you hold. You need somebody to take you to the Lord. And y'all stop telling God what to do for people, just pray his will. You can't tell God what to do because God only does that which is written in his book. So if you don't know the Bible, don't pray personal prayers for people. Pray God's will. Amen. Thank God for our executive pastor on this evening, overseer Sonia Mixon. Our associate pastor is here tonight, and we are grateful. Our assistant pastor, Elder Frank Mixon. And we're glad to have our senior father back safely along with Dr. Barbara. Now, no more music, please, none. I'm trying to get into my teach mode. Y'all play for me on Sunday. Play for Javon every time he get up, but play for me on Sunday. I want to say that I'm very particular and hard on people that believe they're called to preach. Um, some of you are looking at me funny because you have that calling and you've not been activated, so you're frustrated, but you weren't preaching in your last church. As a matter of fact, I don't even think you have a license. I don't need one. You need one to drive. You need one to be married. No, you need one. I mean, you can't just get up and say you have a master's degree and never been in class. I mean, how you, how you just get saved and call yourself to preach? Well, look at someone and tell them not here, just not here. But it's very rare that you find a gift, hear me, where leadership is not being passive but being honest about the achievement or the help needed to better a person's gift. But this Sunday past, I experienced something that was spectacular. Spectacular.
You don't work for the airline and things, do you? And have to be called and can't make Bible study and things, right? Good, because I don't need two of that. All right, I need an associate pastor to prepare him in case something happens to me and then something happened to her. We didn't have anyone that could really fill her place, so I had to come off the road. But I think if we ever hit rock bottom, we have somebody that can help us do the job. We are blessed to have a male and a female for the next generation. I don't hear nobody who can preach the word of God. So I'm glad to have you both because I see that there's hope for the next generation. Somebody say amen. Be seated. Thank you, Elder Eddings, for doing. I mean, I watched the whole thing because I was an hour behind. And normally I watch for about a half hour, cut it off because I have to meditate. But I didn't cut that off. I watched that till times got better. Touch somebody and tell them I'm lit. All right, y'all be seated. We will not have that problem in this ministry where those who lead are jealous of those who can. I am not intimidated by anyone in the world. I'm not competing, comparing myself to anyone on the earth. I am trying to make those who are my coverings and leaders, proud of what I do. But I refuse to die killing myself when we have people that can actually do the job. Amen? Again, a hand for Pastor Jay and Elder Donitra. And what they bring to this ministry. Dr. Mixon has her members still, even though it's only one pastor, it's me. Joe has his own members in here, even though there's only one pastor, and that's I. Eddings just picked up her own members on Sunday, even though there's only one pastor. And I pastored the three that I named. Be seated. We had church in Chicago. It was very difficult because we preached at 12, then right at 4. That is not easy. If you think you can do it, try it. Then we had to fellowship all night till 3 a.m. in the morning with guests from all over the world. Then be at the airport at 7.30 to get to New York delayed four hours to get there and have to try to talk to every cousin, every brother, every old friend that you don't remember to get to the church and not get put up till 10 o'clock p.m. Preach the times got good to me. Then had to be up, get on the plane to make it back here to handle a lot of business. I love you people tonight for showing up on my favorite night of the week. All right, let's get down to business. We are done for a little while with miracles. Put it in. 
uh, your archives, save it. All of you think that I'm repeating a series that I taught back in 2022. It was in 2022 about seeding. This is not the same series. I'm going to call the series, because I didn't tell Dr. Mixon, I'm going to rename the series. And I need people like Dr. Tracy, Tiffany, Dr. Deborah. I'll start there, Bishop, to talk to me. We're going to call this for the next month, Sowing and Reaping. Look at someone and say, Sowing and Reaping. Tonight, what I want to deal with, it's going to be very unusual, is exiting famine and entering harvest. You cannot enter harvest until you properly exit famine. We know when you've exited properly because you don't look like what you went through. Look somebody and tell them I'm not there yet then. I'm not. Some of you dress up, you just don't look up. You don't make what you wear look good because your clothes are up, but your behavior and posture is down. You wasted a lot of money. What you put on only makes you feel good for just a little while. But some of you are doing too much putting on. And you're doing a lot of extracurricular activity on yourselves, eyes, face, lips, hips, fingertips to make people believe you're succeeding. And then some of you fall victim to getting jealous over illusions. The person you're jealous of does not have half of what they're portraying. The Bible says something that's so powerful but yet so simple. Work on your own soul salvation. I need by with fear and trembling. Never allow salvation to be defined as who God is blessing the most with materialistic things. Because my scripture is, what doth it profit a man? I'm glad y'all making it easy to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Good to see you, Adam, and lose his soul. But you are sitting next to someone who God's about to give a chance and a real opportunity at being put in a place where they can help others without hurting themselves. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to help you without hurting me. But if your present helping people has been hurting you, I'm going to ask you to stop. As your pastor, I'm going to ask you to cease. If you giving somebody $20 hurts you, please keep it. That's too much emotions behind $20. That's too much. You're going to want to fight somebody over not getting your $100 back? Please keep it. It's going to cost you more for a lawyer. I want... Our members, those who I've been blessed to be the under-shepherd, I want y'all to get so blessed that stress is not even a factor. Let's use, let's use an old cliche, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Now, if you don't say it, you will never get it. 
That's what's wrong with you quiet folk. You got a lot of attitude, but you have no altitude. Because you don't understand, you need to repeat positive affirmations. And God said, let there be. He didn't think it. He said it. So let the words of my mouth. Thank you, son. And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength. You are our redeemer. Church, say amen. amen. I have to read a long story. And I'm not going to rush this. And I'm not going to hold you. So where I don't finish, I'll pick up for the rest of the month. But we will not get out of this series until I see at least 20 of you out of debt. I need to see some proof. Y'all, that the word of God works. So I only need 19 of you because I'm one. Who's claiming the slot? I'm one. I got blessed last night, Bishop, by a person you saw at the table that you didn't know who drove all the way from Tampa. After I got off my flight, he said, can I see you, Bishop? I said, man, listen, I need to decompress. Talk to me, and I need to go home. I'm tired. He said, Bishop, I just want to put something in your hand and let you go. Now, I know people's personality. I knew it was going to be a good blessing because I know the person's personality. See, I don't waste time for the catch up with you for $20. We can catch that on Sunday. Look at y'all, man. What if what we can catch up on Sunday? Cuz I don't need to spend your $20 right now. Are y'all understanding that? And if you're insulted, then that means you ain't ready for this sermon. Because I just said, I'm going to get you out of what you're in and where you need to go. And you're still offended by your little. Don't help me when it hurts you. That was the first rule. Don't think my God going to give you 20 grand because you gave me $10. That's not the way this works. You reap what you sow. Dr. Gloria, he came, assistant pastor picked me up. We went and sat. He came, he put an envelope in my hand. I stick it in my pocket. I don't look because when you're blessed, you don't rush. I, I just stuck it in my pocket. And I went on about hanging with them till about 10 p.m. It was somewhere around 10 p.m. All of us got home. And I opened it, I showed one person, and I want y'all to hear this. This man who I've been praying with, speaking into his life for over a year and a half. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have, no, privately, talking into him, very obedient, pays his tithe. He has sacrificed, flown out of town at least 12 times this year to just be around his bishop on his own dime, bought his own hotel, just to be present. Didn't go eat with us very mannerable. He put it in my hand, and this is all I'll say for you who know success. It was enough money to pay eight months of my bills, right? I said, uh, now, if you don't understand how sowing and reaping works, the oil drips. So if I'm not getting it, how are you going to get it? I'll say it again, Richard. If I'm not getting it, how does it get through me to you? The only people angry right now are professional freeloaders, but be seated.
It was so good I didn't even put it in the bank yet. I left it right on my dresser because I want to believe it's real. I'm like, look at it. It was a check, so you know, sometimes be like, I hope it cash. Then it said cashier's check. I said, oh, it's already cash. Now, when you can't get happy for me, you need to leave. You need another church. Because what I just described was somebody's going to take you to lunch, sit you down, ask for some of your time, and do a ditto exchange. It might be your baby daddy who ain't never gave you child support ever. You can take the money without taking him. It ain't about him. It's about, all right, let me leave it. I have to. Some of y'all are so hurt by something that happened to you in the past, your future has no chance. Lord God, bless two more of my members to do what that boy did. He don't feel bad because his bank has increased by $600,000. And if I was a swindler, I'd have been like the Lord said more. No! That's the result of what he did. That's why some of you can't tell people all of what you have. Because then they'll reach out for more than what they deserve. Let me lay groundwork. Genesis chapter 41 verses 14 until I am... Happy with the reading. I would that all of my pastors, preachers, elders, deacons, deaconess, missionary, pay close attention. I would that all the members and young adults and those that are my e-members would really pay special attention to this sermon, to this teaching, to this series. I've never begged anyone to pay attention like this. But I know without a doubt the failure is not in God. The failure's in us. Look somebody and tell them, I take responsibility for me. Verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Underscore that. You don't have to stand because I'm reading a light. I'm going to read a lot. They brought him hastily out of the dungeon, which is prison, shaved himself, changed his raiment, and he came in unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I'll explain all this later, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that you can understand a dream to the point of you can interpret it. Thank you for those talking. Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. But God is going to answer Pharaoh through Joseph. The first thing you want to write that you don't have to write is God is not going to get into anything you keep taking credit for. You must admit like Joseph, it is not me. Then let people fight with who did it for you. You got a problem with God blessing me? Go to God. 
I can't. You got a problem with God let, letting him like me and not you? Go to God. Don't be texting me because your boyfriend like me. Go to God. See, some of y'all didn't like that. When you don't know how to manage what he gives you, someone else is looking at it. That's your money, your clothes, your job, your car. That's why the car gets repoed and another person don't care who it got taken from. They buy it at a lower price. They do not care later if you knock on the door and be like, that's my car. It is no longer your car. Because you, keep, because you couldn't keep up with the payments. Because you refused to pay for what you had. Someone else understands the value of it. Yep, it's getting quiet now. Verse 16, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It's not in me, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, in my dream, behold, I stood by the bank of the river. I thought Joseph just told Pharaoh, it's not in me. So he said, God will give you peace. And now, jo and now Pharaoh starts talking to Joseph so that God would hear him. Be careful talking to folk who God does not listen to. When people talk to a lot of people, there's no way God is talking to them. They get all of their information, third, fourth, and fifth party. Because when God speaks, it brings a level of peace. Even if, even if it's the truth about you, you have peace with the truth. Because the person who God used knew how to deliver it. It's not as good as you yet about snakes, serpents, and venom and all this stuff trying to steal my church. 18. Behold, there came up out of the river seven kind. Fat flesh, well-favored. And they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other came up, kind came up after them, poor, very ill, favored, lean flesh, such as I never saw in the land of Egypt for badness. I know y'all lost, but come on. And the lean and the ill favored did eat up the first seven fat kind, which means for those who will scream, uh, the lean lived off of the fat. And there are groups of people that are draining some of you healthy people to where now you don't have the strength you used to have because you let these lean kind. All right. You're not going to listen. Where people don't sow, they become parasites. You work for yours. They use you for theirs. <sighs> Verse 22, I knew they weren't going to like the opening. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin and blasted the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this to the magicians. This is Pharaoh saying, I first tried to get an answer my way. I called some magicians. There was none of them that could declare the understanding. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream that Pharaoh has, he's had two, they are one. Don't some of you act like God ain't sent three people to talk to you. They didn't say the same thing, but it was about the same problem. 
and you didn't hear it because you didn't like the messenger. God needs to send someone I respect. Why are you disrespectful? Why God got to send somebody respectful and you disrespectful? How does that work? Stay with me, Pastor Jake, because when you preach, it's going to have to be. Verse 27, an ill-favored kind that came up after the seven years, the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. Which means in the dream, the fat kind and the lean kind were two different seasons. See, I made it plain. One was the definition of harvest. The other was the definition of famine. And the only way for one person to jump that you can be in famine is you allow it to eat the harvest. That's called buying clothes full price. Yep, I'm going to believe not everybody, but those who are laughing, you've been doing this. I'm going to. Verse 28, and I'm going to rebuke all the men who will say amen loud because you don't want your wife spending money. She should spend all your money. You took all her time, gave her kids, she make all your food. She has the right to spend as much as your money, but if she's a mother manager, she knows what part to spend and what part to save and what to do. Now, if you married... A wife that has no economic prowess? That was your choice. You married a famine and had a family. You never have a child out of wedlock paying child support and barely have enough to pay child support and get your wife pregnant. Does that make sense? Why'd you get your wife pregnant? Because she wants a child when you can't take care of the child that you already have. If she was a business boss, she would understand that. But a woman trying to compete with your past will make you pass out. Now, let me come back. Why did it get quiet even up here? Verse 28, this is the thing which I've spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he's showing it unto you right now through our conversation. Behold, verse 29, there shall come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Look at your uh, neighbor and tell him plenty is about to come. But tell him you need plenty with rules. You need plenty with management skills you need plenty with understanding you cannot have plenty controlling you to whom much is given which means much comes with requirements Y'all stop giving your kids everything they ask for. Make them pass all their grades. Clean their room. Take out the garbage. Take a bath. Smell under their arm. Stop raising another you.
let Pastor Joe or Dr. Uh, uh, Eddings, if they should ever pass to this church, be able to pass to something different than you. Look at the one that to well, I ain't that bad. Notice how you word it, ain't that bad. You didn't say you're good. You still had bad in your reference. Study psychology, that'll tell you something. Because to say I ain't that bad, you're comparing yourself to someone worse. You're not in your reality of where you should be for real. You're not rationalizing well. Did you tell your number from verse 29, plenty is coming? There shall arise after these plenty years, seven years of famine. And all the plenty, y'all, shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land because of the famine that followed. I thought I had a teaching crowd. <sighs> the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for the famine shall be very grievous. Look at the deep folk. I rebuke this sermon. What? You need to spend that on rebuking your homelessness and death. Don't, don't rebuke the sermon. If you got that much power, why are you broke? Rebuke death. People love rebuking what makes them look at themselves and take responsibility for themselves. They don't like it. I've been there. I overcame it, but it's not easy. Verse 31. The plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. 32. And for that, the dream was double unto you. And the reason why you dreamt the same thing for all you folk that dream things over and over again, maybe you need to ask God to stop you from dreaming. I'm going to tell you that now. Because you think you're dreaming for somebody else when the dream's about you. Remember, Joseph, the first time we met him, am I teaching? It's going to get good in about 20 minutes. He was a dreamer. And you people, I tell my members I don't believe in it, y'all found a way to say I have a gift of dreaming, and dreaming is not a gift in the Bible. Joseph was not a dreamer. He only dreamt twice. And if two dreams can bring all that hell, why you want to have 20? Two dreams. Brothers tried to kill him. Went to a pit. Two dreams. Now the dream came to pass when he was 30. But it gave him hell from 13. dream very rare I normally dream 
when I dream a lot, it's because I ate ice cream and stuff late at night. But, yeah. but when they're prophetic, they come with a different tone, and I know when they're prophetic. And I know when it's time to rebuke it for whatever reason, when to listen to it. Just because you're good at dreaming don't mean you're good at interpreting. Uh-oh. I... So to tell everybody your dreams, you could be hindering your future because, number one, you have not taken time to get the translation. And I want to say this. Because it seems like I'm veering from the sermon. and But I think four of y'all believe gift is, dreaming is a gift. And if you got it, fine. But just don't believe God uses you like that all the time. What I want to say to a few of you is this. It's a shame that God can't reach you when you're awake. Why does he have to wait to reach you? Just go to him about it. Go to him about it. Because most of you that actually have dreaming tendencies, you have been stuck in a Joseph prison for a long time. That's why you need so much help. That's why you're so emotional and don't know what's going on. Sensitive to the spirit world and to what people do to you. Because awake things hurt. You only have peace when you sleep. The only time I like dreaming is when it's real good and I hate. When I got to wake up, I'd be like five more minutes and I... Then you go back hoping, part two, Lord. I know y'all ain't had those kind of dreams. We all dream, but it's not one of the gifts of the spirit. It's not from the devil. It is just a means and a way where God talks to people in their unconsciousness. That's all it is. So if you have a dream, you're in a car wreck, that don't mean don't drive. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It means pay attention to the road. It's God telling you stop speeding. See, you see yourself in the wreck. God is saying slow down. Don't make rights where it say no no, no rights on red. Don't make a U-turn where it says no U-turn. Don't back up the ramp. Yep. Because you missed your exit. Then you cussing folk out. Back up. No, no, no. No. No, you can't rebuke me when you're in the wrong direction. Y'all missed that, huh? Verse 32, for that dream was double, which means you dreamt it twice. And this is why you dreamt it twice about the same thing, but two different ways. It's because the thing is established by God. And because you dreamt it twice that clear, it's about to happen shortly. So the dream is not for what he's dreaming to, to come to pass quickly. It is. What he dreamt, y'all look at me, those that are, it's about to happen speedily, good or bad. If you caught that, say amen. But the interpretation of the dream is when you can't stop what's going to happen, prepare for it. And if you're prepared for the famine, because you know how to manage the harvest, it shouldn't hurt you. 
So if you dream somebody don't like you, you should be emotionally disconnecting. Why are you still connected? That was God saying, back up a little bit. Don't return the calls as much. Don't go to lunch this Sunday. Oh, you didn't hear that because you had to be awake. Your dream needs an awakening. Can I keep reading? I'm almost done, Janice. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out, find a man discreet and wise. Discreet and wise, which means don't tell your business to people that are not discreet. But folk with dreams with no management skills always tell their business to the wrong person because I thought, I thought, I thought. It says certain information should only be divulged when the person is discreet and wise. Not best friends, my mama. The person has to be discreet, not related. Can anybody be honest with your pastor and admit by jumping up, I did say some things I should have kept to myself. All right, be seated. I'm good. I'm all right. And the person that told it looked at you and said, I ain't say nothing. And made you believe you crazy. But the problem is not them, it was you. The problem is you. The problem was never who you told. The problem was you. You are not wise. And you're telling things to people who are not discreet. So now when it gets out, what shouldn't get out, what you dreamt is now your nightmare. Now let's go further. Now therefore, now you can't have who you dream. It's over. Now you can't enjoy peace at your new place because you told somebody who told your stalker your new address. You're dumb. You're a dumb dreamer. There's no nice way to call someone dumb. Like there's no nice word for rape. No nice word for betrayal. No nice word for you're a liar. I don't care if you call it white lie, polka dot, pink. No, no, you're a liar. See, people try to soften things and that's why you make the person stay what they are. If you want folk to wake up out of what they're in, you've got to give them, it's called a rude awakening. Open rebuke better than secret love. I love them, so I'm just going to mind my business. No, you don't love them. Not if you know they're going to die and you just... I don't want those type of people in my life. Thank God I grew up in a house where my daddy gave me plenty of rude awakenings. And did it in church in a sermon and said, this little pig is Todd. That Negro talked about the three little pigs and made them his three sons. But at least I know how to build my next house out of brick. You got to take the rebuke and rebuild.
I got help. I saw a lady in the back who I don't know. She said, preach. So I'm going to teach this thing. Therefore, let Pharaoh look for a person that's discreet and wise, set him over the land of Egypt, because nothing can stop this dream. You're going to have seven fat years followed by seven horrific years. And you need someone postured to know how to help you manage the exit and the entrance of. Said, let Pharaoh do this. Verse 34, Dr. Barbara, let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land. Let him take up a fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven years. Tell him, put a fifth part of everything during the harvest away. See, see, see. Now, he didn't dream this. He needed rules for what he dreamt. Let him take a fifth part. I hope you men are hear me. Put it away. <laughs> and let them do this for seven years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep the food in the cities. So give the cities the food, but give, I'm going to see who's talking to me, but give Pharaoh them the corn because corn becomes uh, 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 energy. Corn becomes gas. Corn becomes fuel. Fuck. What? And corn don't age fast because it's not digestible. Uh-oh. What you don't eat, you learn to use. eat everything and have nothing left over for God to use. You have nothing. Look at me. Don't you dare look down. You have you ain't no Bible in your lap. You have nothing left over for God to use. Then you special folk. I used to be like y'all, but I rebuked that. I'm delivered. I've been delivered over 24 years. I don't eat leftovers. Are you crazy? If you don't eat leftovers, then order from the menu where it's enough for you to finish. Then you look for somebody who can't afford the meal. Do you want some? It's insulting sometimes. That you want to give me your leftovers. Now, because certain people, especially young women, don't get offended, can't cook like the women in my day and my grandparents, there's certain food we can't eat the next day because y'all don't know what to do. And, uh, Back in the day with no microwave, cold fried chicken was good when grandma did it. Next day, spaghetti. Y'all ain't talking something. Now you be like, uh-uh, throw that away. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Nah. Uh-uh. Back in the day, lukewarm pizza was good when you got it from the right place. Give me that. Fuck. Well, because we understood famine, and some of us thought, I thought when I was in the hood on Section 8, I thought because of my daddy's way of talking that I was rich. I didn't know nothing about the word poor. Everybody in the projects was jealous of the hall boys. 
We wore suits. We wore Chuck Taylors. We didn't even know we were poor. We was eating grilled cheese, fried bologna, sticking it with a fork so it could be flipped over like a bowl. We ate the rim. Y'all ain't, I mean, we were spectacular in our ingenious methods of eating. We took the spaghetti and swirled it on the fork, and sometimes we ate them one string at a time. We had fun. We cut hot dogs, fried them, put them in eggs, scrambled it up. We had fun. We did not know that we put Kool-Aid in a Dixie cup, put it up in the freezer in an ice tray. We had no idea that sugar water could be that good. Now everything we once enjoyed, your bougie side. And it's cool because you're going to be broke often. You're going to have to work past retirement. Every now and then I revisit something I said I never do. The only thing I'm never doing, no, I ain't going to say never, but I haven't done it and I don't want to is eat bologna. I've eaten so much bologna. I've had so much bologna. Oh, my God. I, uh, I've had, my bologna had a first name. My bologna had a second name. Ah. Because Oscar Maya had a way. I ain't doing no spam. I'll become a vegan before I eat spam. I'm telling you. Now, when I grew up, it was good. You fried it. It had a little thing to open the can, but it would break all the time. See, in my 60s, my memory still reminds me. You will never be humble if you erase your memory. I can watch what folk eat and not tease them and be like, it's all good. Because by the grace of God. See, some of you ain't going to never tell the truth. I had a span in life where I was a little homeless. My father put me out. I was a little cocky and proud. I know y'all never did this. You live with your friend, your fake cousins. There was a span where I had three days of I had nowhere to go. And I saw somebody throw a good burger in the garbage. And I thought about eating that burger. You ain't going to never tell your story. I looked in there. Somebody was not looking. It was wrapped up. It won out. It's the same as eating your leftovers. Look how quiet it got now. What is trash to you is treasure for somebody else. And what you be saying, ew, not me. You don't know when that season is going to come. You don't know when that season. Bring it down a little bit. Thank you. It's going to come. Cut it off. Job had more than a trillion dollars. Cut the house back up. Job had more than a trillion dollars. And in less than a week, it was all gone. And Job made it plain for those that are not talking, the Lord giveth. And
And the Lord, thank you, taketh away. But he still said, blessed be the name. Never let what you have start having you. Give me some gain in these mics and let's move quick. Y'all gonna make me hire my own sound person and everybody gonna get mad. Let them gather all the food. Years, Pharaoh, keep the food in the city. 36, the food shall be for store to the land against seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, the land that the land perished not through the famine. The thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this man? Is there a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Y'all quiet. Which means if you claim to have God living on the inside of you, you're not supposed to be doing that bad. Because God is a manager of seasons. Y'all quiet. Some of you are filled with the Holy Ghost, but you don't have the spirit of God, which is the spirit of wisdom. We've got some ignorant Holy Ghost filled individuals. Not everybody has enough wisdom to have heaven on earth. Look how quiet it got on that. Cut that house up. Not everybody has enough wisdom to have heaven on earth. So there's some folk that's going to go through hell on earth and still make it to heaven. But why wait to get to heaven to live heavenly when you don't know what that life is even going to look like? Why not have some practice down here? Thank you. Leave it. Thy kingdom come. I can't get my millionaire. Thy will be done in earth. Don't wait to go there. Give us this day daily bread. Not a weekly check. I want a check. All right, I'll leave that alone till Sunday. Every day. I can't wait till y'all make a minimum of $300 a day. Minimum. I did the math. Some of you a thousand a day. That's $365. Some of you $5,000 a day. But you don't believe it because right now you can't handle 20 a day. 10. 100. Got a few minutes left. Verse 39, Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God have showed thee all this, he showed it to you, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. Then he says, I'm going to put you, y'all going to be over my house. Y'all missing all of this. According to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be stronger than you. Oh, y'all ain't tough. God's about to give some of y'all rich friends who's going to make you be like their father, mother, financial advisor. And they can't do it letting you stay broke if they're making you their advisor. You're about to get paid for your advice. Tell somebody and tell them I'm about to get paid for my advice. If you run your mouth all the time, how you broke? Verse 14, then I got three paragraphs. Thou shalt be over my house according to thy word. Shall my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. 
Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. Y'all go and put it on Joseph's hand. Touch somebody and tell them that's a transfer of power. That's a transfer of power. What Joseph just did for one person who will jump is he did not marry Pharaoh. He married success. What Pharaoh said is you ain't got to pay, pay for a house. You ain't got to pay for no food. All you got to do is show him my ring and whatever you desire, put it on my card. See, I got Dr. Deaconess Tracy catching it, but the rest of y'all slow because you're going to work and work and work and mean and mean because you cannot enjoy your wealth. And even when you try to sleep, you're going to wake up still tired because you're not where you're supposed to be in God. You too busy trying to do this your way. I've been in this business for 12 years. Man, you got a million dollars saved? No, sir. How much you got to say? About three grand. 12 years. 12 years. Three grand times. 12 years. Multiply that. How much did you save a year? See, the problem is you would have had a lot more money. I'm teaching those who want to be taught. If you would stop saying how long you've been in business and go back to who put the business in you. See? 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 I just lost you. The issue is you're taking credit for something you didn't even put in you. You know why you can sing? I've been singing since a child, but who put singing in you? One thing I can't stand, and I'm joking, but there's a little seriousness to all my jesting. I cannot stand when slim folk can eat a whole cow and not gain weight, right? I can't stand you skinny people. Because I love food, but three bites and I feel like I done put on 20 pounds. Well, that's because God put a metabolism. And in everyone, there's a metabolism, but if you don't know how to manage it and what causes it to do what it does, you lose it. You used to be one of them people, Joe, but you gain them weight now. You stay right there. Verse 42, Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, Dr. Tracy. He put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Put a gold chain about his neck because now if you're going to represent me, you must look like me. Oh boy, y'all quiet. If I'm going to make you over all of Egypt and they're used to seeing me this way, then I can't let you represent me your way. Put on what I tell you. Oh, you see, nobody wants to hear that. You don't tell success when you're failing what your rules are. Forty-three. He made him ride in the second chariot, which he had, which meant Pharaoh was in the first one and Joseph was in the next. And they cried before him. They bowed their knee. He made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, after he gave him a trial run, I am Pharaoh. But without you, shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. He said, if anybody disrespects you, 
they will be indirectly disrespecting me. So when my car goes by my chariot, they will bow. They will get up off their knees after your chariot passes. Uh-oh, everybody's quiet. When you hook up to the right source, there is a transfer of power. Black people have one problem. Well, it's really called pride, but I'm going to describe it. Black people have a lot of pride. I don't know where we got it from, but it's overwhelming. And the pride shows up like this for four women who will jump in two men. I, listen, I don't care how nobody else do it. I'm going to do it the way I feel like doing it. That statement is going to ruin your life, your marriage, and your children. Because you don't want to be like somebody else. About to close. Sowing and reaping. Exiting famine, entering harvest. Let me read my notes and let me see if five of y'all catch it for real. There is something in you that God has been nurturing for years that you had no idea of. Let me talk to talkers. God said, I know the plans I have for you. I know you have plans because you're human. But my plans supersede. It said, and they are good and no evil. To bring you to an expected end. Not beginning, not middle. Some of y'all are frustrated and you ain't even near the end. The end is where the success is. What you do in the middle? No, I saved that for Sunday. You praise them in the middle. And I'm going to break down what praise is Sunday because it ain't the thing you t thinking about. But let's go on. What is being assembled in you and I for a later date is going to set us up for the rest of our lives and bless us with enough to set in posture, a firm posture for, for the success of our children. But what you must understand, I'm going to see who can talk for teaching. First is you must find excitement or some form of insight in the place in which your life is now. And that place is called frustration and stagnation. You must find joy in junk. I just want to talk to somebody. You must get some form of insight in the place in which your life is right now, which is the place of frustration and stagnation. The reason why your life is in this particular state of being is because God is setting you up for a personal harvest. I have not finished. Being that y'all don't want to pay no attention, you that don't talk in service, don't talk to me after service. Let's keep it rude for real. Let me teach you what rude looks like for 48 hours. Famine and harvest are two contrasting concepts. And normally they are birthed out of a system called agriculture. Normally those two words are attached to agriculture, farming. Talk to me, intelligent saints. A harvest is a time of abundance. When crops are ripe and ready to be gathered, it's a period of joy and prosperity for the farmers and for the community. On the other hand, famine is a period of extreme scarcity of food, leading to a widespread hunger, malnutrition, even starvation, which then turns into pestilence disease, and unfortunately, death. I don't
don't care if you're married and how well you and your wife love to copulate and have sexual interaction. When you're broke, make no babies. You can't even pay a babysitter. Don't even think somebody's going to watch your Rugrats for $20. Way, way back in the day in the 60s and 50s, you could do that because the children stayed with grandma, they stayed with their aunt, they ate, but ain't no parks, ain't no concrete, ain't no bikes to ride outside, ain't got no real aunts. Y'all ain't got no real uncles, ain't got no real grandmamas, ain't got no real nothing left now. You ain't bringing them over here. They ain't eating all my food. You better come get them before I kill them. Don't finance emotions. Some of you are emotionally driven. You spin emotionally. You eat off of emotions. Famine, scarcity of food, leading to widespread hunger, malnutrition, often starvation, pestilence, and death, disease and death. It's a devastating event caused by the factors like drought, war, economic crisis. Long-lasting consequences affect the whole population. Am I boring you? While a harvest signifies hope and sustenance, a famine represents despair and suffering. Now I'm about to close on my two paragraphs. We'll pick it up next Wednesday because I thought y'all were going to rock with me, but I feel you. Let me break this down. Mike, I don't never do something and be bored. Mike, catch me now. Let me break this down, Pastor Jay, especially because this sermon's about you. His name, Joseph. He's a little different than you because he didn't have parents to take care of him. Joseph is serving time in prison for an act that he did not commit. The first sign that you're being interviewed by Harvest is being falsely accused for things you did not. I'm going to prove who's going to be a millionaire because you've said something like this. I'm not saying that I didn't do nothing, but I didn't do all of what they said. That's, that's real. You are taking ownership, and you ain't taking people down with you by mentioning their names. The story is not about his brothers. It's about Joseph. He's betrayed by his brothers. He's ignored by his mama and daddy. But the story is about him. Everything happening in your life, it's to bring out who you are. I wish I could throw this mic towards the back of the church and it hit somebody upside the head. You're too busy paying attention to characters in your chapters that only has a name in there because they're attacking you. If they didn't have someone like you to talk about, pick on, text about, nobody would even pay them attention. This story is about you. He's in prison, he's incarcerated because of an act that he was accused of that he did not do. He also, I'm about to close, he served 13 years for this. 
Nuh uh talk. Don't act like you know the Bible. Learn something. He was supposed to serve life. He was supposed to never get out. So the second way you know you're going to be wealthy and successful is you got out of something that most people would have died in. See, y'all bragging about money. I'm bragging about survival. I got out of this with no money. I got this with bad credit. Why y'all bragging on the end of the story when the end of the story is a result of how you handle the beginning and the middle? Thirteen years. But everywhere Joseph went and everything he went through, prison, the pit, and all of that for talkers, the scripture always says after he gets put in it, and the Lord was with him. Hold on. I'm, boy, I'm about to run on Sunday. God was with him, not in every good thing. So if you're going through something for 10 years, at least you can say, ain't no way I made it without God. And once God keeps hearing his name brought up, he starts saying, now are they ready for the harvest? Because the harvest is plenteous. But the laborers, people who are willing to go through for it, not enough for you. These young ladies who I love, y'all got to stop losing your mind over not having a male friend. Y'all are crazy. Like for real, y'all are crazy. You in your 20s, you in your teens, you got so many years ahead of you, you, you crazy. I want to be with the first one that touched me. Man, move on, two, three, uh, hush the nonsense. Sex ain't never made nobody fall in love. You fell in lust because you were too young to know what love was. Love is how we treat each other when there's no sex involved. You don't love me no more. Why? Because we ain't sexy. Wherever, whenever Bishop Etherwards, whenever, whenever Joseph went somewhere that was terrible where he should have died, the pit prison, it said, and the Lord was with Joseph. It didn't say the rest of them that was in it. Because there's folk in here going through the same thing you're going through, jealous of you because you handle it better than they do. And the simple understanding of me is the Lord is with me. Come on, brag and tell somebody that. Mean it. The Lord is with me. You and I are going through the same thing and you having a nervous breakdown and I'm going with a breakthrough. How is this? I've been married, divorced, cheated on, should have lost my mind, killed somebody, falsely accused by a woman saying it was my baby, paid child support to find out after 15 is 0.00, wanted to commit murder. That's a human response. But how did I turn out like this? Because God said before you kill her, I'm going to put you in a season of frustration. I'm going to put you in a season of stagnation. I'm going to lock you up where you can't do nothing you want to do. And that is the place where I saved your life. The season of you could and would, I made sure you couldn't and wouldn't.
Because then your worst decision would have killed your harvest. Demolished. My closing paragraph, and I mean it. I know you want more now because you didn't know where I was going. But it's okay. Tell someone again and mean it. The Lord is with me. Y'all know how y'all say it, mothers, and he walks with me. I'll save that till Sunday. Joseph went to jail at 17. He served. I hear somebody jealous of my teaching, but that's fine. He served 13 years. Which means he gets out at 30. To prove that, Genesis 41, verse 46, put it on the screen, leave it there for 30 seconds, just so they don't think I make stuff up. I want them to be smart in Bible study. Genesis 41, verse 46 says, Joseph was 30 years old. When he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. So this is telling you how old he was when he stood before Pharaoh, 30. He went in at 17. He got out at 30. He served 13 years of a lifetime sentence. That's a long time for something you didn't do. And I want to say this, and if I don't get a praising group in here, I'm going to be mad. All of you that have been falsely accused and you tried to handle it the best way you said, God's giving you compensation, recompense. God is about to give you restitution. You're going to be paid for every year you were falsely accused. All the time you served. Here's my last statement. Be seated, wealthy recipients. We're going to dance on Sunday. Here's my last statement. Your teenage years... All the way through your 20s. God told me to tell my church, those are the years where you have the right to make your bad decisions. Because you're going to be charged whether you did it. He don't call the young because they're wise. I wish my old saints would get up off. He don't call them because they're anointed. They're strong, which means they have a lot of energy to exert. And when they're not properly guided, even though they love God, sing on the praise team, love Jesus, they make... St I won't go get on your side. They make mistakes. No, stupid ain't stupid till you do them when you're old. When you're young, they are mistakes. You're supposed to make your mistakes when you're young. But when you're old, you know the way. He called the old, oh, they ain't talking to me now. Because you should know the way. Your teenage years and the decisions you make 
when you're in your 20s is where most of your false charges and accusations are going to derive. You must remember one thing. If you have any Joseph in you, these pit stops, these temporary incarcerations, they're not going to scream, are a result of some dream you had. Yep, they didn't catch it because they're too young. The devil has been fighting your dream for 20 years, 15 years, because he knows the dream is real and the dream does not have power until the dreamer wakes up. Dreams have no power for sleeping people. I'm going to close. The incarceration that you feel is the time you needed to be removed from distraction and general population so that you can be prepared for it when you are released. Let me say it again with one sentence left. God has done a lot of separating us from certain people, not because we don't want to socialize, not because they don't like us. He made some of them turn against us because he says, I need you to serve time. You are too distracted around groups, people. You become too needy. You get too depressed when folk hurt you. I need to put you in a personal incarceration. And the only person you're going to talk to, I'm going to see who catch it, most of the time is going to be me or someone going through what you in. Because God said, when you went to jail, I went with you. Yell it. Oh, yeah. When you went to court, I went with you. And I'm in this with you because I want to see, can you and I spend a little more quality time then you out there looking like a Christian hustler. A needy, thirsty, tongue-speaking individual. I'm going to close right here. Then I'm leaving. Joseph is in the prison, and the Bible says the prison he was in, I'm going to see who jumps up front, was not general population. He said he was where the king's people were held. He's in a personal isolation with people who had a relationship with a king. He is not hanging out with the folk that are generalized. When you go through, you don't talk to normal people going through normal situations. You tell God, put you in isolation. Some of you are not isolated, you're insulated. You don't want nobody talking to you at all. That's called insulation. They're in isolation. Look, while he's in there and we close, there are two people serving time with him. And the Bible says, even when he is incarcerated for rape, that they put him in prison over all the prisoners. He running things wherever he goes. Even in jail. They said nobody moves or gets up, so he's practicing in prison what he's about to do at the palace. Oh yeah. And if you can't do it on lockdown, how you gonna do it when you get out? People think you just started being this. You were doing this before you got paid. The money didn't change me. The money just gave me power to do it a little better. Now, this is one of my best openings. I don't care if you like it or not now. 
Especially for those that are in their right mind. Because all of you are not. And what's unfortunate is you know you're not. But look at me. While he's in there. He recognizes after seven, after 13 years that a butler and a baker are in his cell and they're looking sad one day. They're going to miss it. I'm done. And Joseph is so much of a minister of God. He says to them, why are you so sad? And the butler and the baker of the king who got fired is now telling him me and my friend had a dream. In the dreams, so-and-so happened with bread, so-and-so happened with birds, so-and-so happened with a cup. And Joseph said to them, tell God your dreams, tell them to me. Y'all missed that word. He said, tell God your dreams, tell them to me. I'll do it one more time. Tell God your dreams, now tell them to me. He is telling them I'm not in here alone. And if you talk to me. Oh, nobody's catching this. Huh? You're in something longer than you should because of who you talk to. He said, tell God your dreams, tell it to me. And they said, thus so, so and thus. Then he interpreted it. One of you will be restored to the king. The other one will get his head cut off because you're going to come out the same. You don't get a second chance at this. Let me show you again. He said, one of you going to go back and serve better and you're going to be restored. The other one's going to go back who used to bake the bread and I see birds stealing the bread so that means you still going to feed the wrong people and you shall have your head cut off. And they both got free. One went, both went back to their jobs. One did pitiful, got his head cut off. This one I want to say from there, and then Bishop, I'll say the last thing and we can hug. Ten people catch this. Why come out before you're ready? All you're going to do is cut yourself short. You do better to serve more time. I know you can preach, but it ain't time for you to preach. Because you can't live half of what you preach. You mess up the bread. Head was cut off. They asked Joseph when they were leaving, what would you like for us to do for you? Joseph said, to both of them, and then let's close, mention my name to the king. Just put a good word in for me. Can't nobody put a good word in for you if everybody you hang with got bad reputations. How does this work? How y'all trying to get favors from folk that ain't got no favor? How in the world is this working? And the names you mention have no favor on them, no grace. Why are y'all fighting for people with bad names? You're supposed to protect me no matter what. You love me. That's a lie. Mm -mm. I'm not going to help you find you while losing me. No, I'm, I'm just not doing that. I close, look at me. Joseph gets out, uh, 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 Deacon Mays, he has to serve eight more years 
because the man that got restored forgot him. Some of you are one, one, you are one movement away from success. Ask me what that is. Stop giving attention to people who forgot you. When they forget, let them forget. And when you get blessed, you forget too. See, my thing is forgetful goes two ways. If you go into your, your timeouts or your incarcerations, your imprisonment, and you come out the same way, you deserve what you get. You are not in general population. Uh, Rennis, you know so much of the Bible. Minister Wellington's beginning to acquire a love for scriptures. Elder Kevin knows quite a bit about the Bible. Y'all remember this. Everywhere Joseph went, good and bad, he was in control of everything except one thing in every house. Potiphar said, in my house you are in charge, just don't touch my wife. Everywhere he went, he was over everything except the owner's property. Oh, y'all. And that woman wanted Joseph more than she wanted her husband. Because she saw his value. And he wanted to get blessed the right way that he ran away from the temptation. And got caught on false accusation. See, some of you judging some of us wrong. You're looking at what we're going through, trying to find a sin to connect it to, when it's probably no sin connected to it at all. It's my season to be on lockdown. Now, when I come out, don't try to be nice. Oh, God done restored you. I've been praying for you, and I didn't say nothing, but I call your name three times a day. I knew he was going to do it, baby. How much did you get? Nice call you got out there. Oh, you and your wife made it? Oh, you didn't expect it? No matter how blessed you are, you better not be the reason why what they say is true. People like that get their heads cut off. Everyone standing, get a good offering in your hand. I can't wait till Sunday. Mm -mm -mm. Look at me, all of you that are about to give, all of the people that God has blessed me to be your pastor. Some of you, look at me, all of you. Some of you, deep down inside, you dislike me. And I want to put the camera on me the right way. And I want to admit to some of you, I dislike the you you are. And I'm going to keep doing it until that devil in you is so stirred. that you decide to do something about yourself. Church is not a place where you get to be you anytime. It's a place you come to be a better you all the time. Even to some of my older saints, y'all are going through what you're going through because you hard headed too, talking about me behind my back at your house. It's gonna catch up to you. If you're going to be who you say you are, serve where you submit. Give your leader a chance to lead. Try what he or she says and see if it's effective and give it time. No one at my age, when you get to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, should be saved, Holy Ghost filled and broke. Not any of us. None of us. Something is wrong. 
None of us should be carless, homeless, helpless, fully sick where we can enjoy our retirement money. Something is wrong. We cannot find witchcraft. Suit saying. Because now you're saying there's a power stronger than the Holy Ghost that you possess. I'd rather you just say you don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm physically uh, uh, sick in certain areas. Every day I get up, you know me, have pain like everybody else. I won't nurse it, and I won't give it verbal life. Okay, what the doctor say? He told me I ain't got to spread that because now I am sanctioning what he said. I go back to the Bible. Whose report will we believe? And it's not that I'm a fanatic. But none of this that has come against me ever happened to me till I passed the jaw. None of it. And I don't believe you're the cause. I believe you're the case. The cause is God brought y'all a leader who wants to see you blessed and Satan must attack that type of leader because he rather us keep having ritual church. 45 minutes, jump, shout, disperse, kiss, hug, see you next Sunday. Nobody get delivered, nobody get healed, nobody change, nobody own a business. That's not church, that's prison. I want y'all to get it right because you're missing something that's so wonderful. Thanksgiving is next week. And y'all going to bring impersonators to your house because you don't want to eat alone. Y'all going to bring folk who didn't buy a turkey or ham, didn't help you cook. They just ate and left and talked about I didn't like the pie though. What? I tell you, take this week coming and analyze the behavior of those you call friends. Those you call your best friends. And if they can't be grateful for what God's doing for you and brag and compliment you on how you made it, you need to stop serving in their cells. Reason why Paul and Silas got out of jail is they both prayed together at midnight. Don't be in something and the party in there don't know God like you do. I'm good. I told the man who gave me the check, you don't even know this because he loves me. But I took him to the car and I said, I need to tell you something. I said, I'm not in need of this uh, check right now. He said, I know you're not. God told me. I said, good. I said, but let me tell you something. If you ever need it back, I said, I'm going to offer it to you one time now. If you ever need it back, what? Y'all want me to give it to them all the time? I said, I said, tell me, and I'll give it back. He said, I'm not going to need it back because you know how much I received. I said, but I need to tell you something else. I said, God had already given me what you gave me in the amount of the check. He said, when? I said, my two boys at the table if I needed that money, they would give it to me. Amen. One was him. I ain't going to tell her, but I knew he would because I told his name. I said I would never ask him. I never needed. I said, but if my boy knew that I was being put out and needed this, I know he and his wife would talk and I'd get it. Some come in the form of a check, paper, and some a person. You don't always need the cash. You need company. Because when the cash goes, it does not promise it's coming back. But if you have a friend, that's why some of you lost potential friends because you borrowed their money first and never paid them back. Now they don't even want to be around you. 
November's the month that I told y'all y'all have the right to say what? Has anyone started using it? No, no, let me see your hand. No, don't lie. Don't lie in here. We don't lie. The next 45 days you better use it because everybody wants to bar around Christmas and Thanksgiving. Get your offerings, bring them, whatever they is. Hopefully you're doing good. And I've asked God to bless two more members like he blessed that man because I want to see what y'all do with your money. I just want to see, can we get more than one? Look at these young adults bringing cash. <laughs> 